You're listening to The Dating Den with dating and relationship badass and best-selling author, Marnie Batista. Every week, you'll get the raw truth from top experts and real people on the important dating, sex, and relationship issues you want to know about. So if you're ready for true talk that's authentic and unfiltered, and you're not afraid to be called out on your <clears throat> stuff, then you're ready for what's next. Ladies, we have some really exciting news for you. So, you know, I am a firm believer in making the necessary shifts in your mind and your heart so that you can live from a place of your most authentic and fully expressed self. So with that, I'm super happy to announce that our podcast, The Dating Den, is making a major shift so that we can live from our most authentic self. Now, if you followed The Dating Den for a while, you know the work we do on the show is about much more than just dating. At the core, we're helping our listeners live and love courageously so that they can create a life of peace and joy and success and freedom and fulfillment beyond your wildest dreams. So to fully realize this vision, we knew we needed to expand. So in addition to providing expert advice and real talk on the dating and relationship topics that you want to know about, we're also going to be introducing a whole new range of guests and topics that will help you create success and fulfillment in all the areas of your life, not just with men, but with your career and money and leadership and purpose and even your health. And there might even be a name change, wink, wink. So stay tuned for the following episode with Sherry Tays, eight easy to fix mistakes in your online dating profile that are sabotaging your chances at finding real love. So we'll see you then. And whatever you do, you know, do it with some damn dignity. We'll see you then. Ladies, oh my gosh, you're in for a doozy today. If you have wondered why you are unsuccessful and you can't figure it out because it seems like you're doing everything right, well, this is your lucky day because I have Sherry Tays here who is our uh, master coach uh, at the Institute for Living Courageously. She's been a licensed therapist for California in 25, for 25 years. She is part of our Living Courageously Elite program. She uh, is a coach for our Living Courageously Trailblazers program. She does leadership for that program, and she is the queen and the mayor of Whoville. Uh, when people work with us in the five keys to being irresistible, she focuses on what's causing people to be stuck, and this is the important part, creates a foolproof plan detailing how you can break through and acquire the skills to maintain a long-term lifestyle shift, which is like, woohoo, I love it. Sherry, I'm so glad that you're here. Oh, thank you for having me back. I, I was getting on um, Skype to record this, and I realized we had not been on Skype. We ha our last episode was like a year ago. Wow, time flies. It really does. And I think this is really an exciting topic because we are going to address, ladies, the ways that you are sabotaging your results when you are online dating and you don't even know it. Because I know what I hear when I talk to people, even if I'm like listening, and maybe you've done this too, like you're at, at dinner somewhere or lunch and you mm -hmm. hear two women talking about dating, online dating, and they're just talking about how it sucks and about their dates. And don't you just want to like go, hey, let me tell you exactly what you're doing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, I'm like, oh my God, I just want to give up my card so bad. Um, so here's the thing, ladies. And, and we talk about this a lot when we use examples from uh, the Bachelor uh, franchise, because we see these very attractive, you know, reasonably smart people sabotaging relationships. And that's why it's so great for us, because we can just show you what it looks like in real life. Uh, but I think some of you even think like, well, I would never do that. But guess what? You are. So today we're going to talk about like how you do that. We are going to actually dive into some nitty gritty things uh, about uh, how you're doing that actually in the online dating process. So we are going to we are going to definitely go deep here. So Sherry, like first thing first is we you know we like to talk about the belief system. Right. Because even if you have the like skills and the tools and, you know, you've listened to every episode and you, you, you know how to do it, um, there's some unconscious 
pieces that will really wreck your results no matter like what you do. Would you want to talk about those? I I do. And um, that is driven by little who's. And those and little who's are smart because ladies, you guys are smart um, and they can sound really real. But little who's are the uh, the wounded parts of you where things didn't go so great in childhood. You can also have older little who's where things didn't go so great um, in college or relationships. And these little who's form limiting beliefs and um, they're not good. They're either negative messages about you and your worthiness, your lovability, or they're negative messages about um, other people and men. And it, And if you are not aware when they are driving the bus, um, they can sound really realistic uh, and you can get your friends to agree with you. And that's what makes it so sneaky and really so heartbreaking, Marnie, for you and I to see that happening when it's so fixable. Well, yeah. And I think what's really important is for those of you who are listening is the, the key to really opening your eyes and seeing the limiting beliefs is they don't sound like limiting beliefs. To you, they are like 100% fact and truth. Like there's uh, qu not quality men where I live mm -hmm. or um, men just want sex or the minute I open up, you know, the guys run away. So I'm not going to do that. They have to prove themselves. Um, and older ladies, um, this is, I, this, I think it makes me laugh because I just think the way they've languaged it is really funny. <laughs> Uh, they want, they don't want to be a nurse with a purse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, do men say that too? What do they say? I wonder about like, they I don't want to be, you. they don't want to be like a sugar daddy. Yeah, uh, that's, that's what I hear more, most often from men. Yeah. They don't, they don't want to be a sugar daddy. Um, and <clears throat> wherever you are in your journey, you have a lot of these limiting beliefs that you think are facts. And so what happens sherry and we see this all the time you know when we're working with people and it's like uh, i'm doing it right i swear i'm doing it right and we find out that there are some uh limiting beliefs that are you know the evil spawn of little who's um <laughs> so what happens so what does that look like in real life um well first off i i, I want to talk about how they can be really sneaky with this idea of men just want to have sex okay um because men are physical creatures, right? They, they are attracted to us with their eyes and they are complimentary about that. And if you have this limiting belief that men just want sex, you're gonna miss when a high quality guy is simply just being complimentary about your beauty or your shape. And so that's how sneaky they can be. That is such a huge one because I've even had people, um show us text messages, right? And they're yeah. like, can you believe he said that? What a perv. And we're like, wait, no, that was like a compliment, right? Yeah. Like, so you have to really look at how these things are impacting the lens through which you are looking at the entire experience. It is really impacting everything. And no matter how smart you are, you're not immune to limiting beliefs. So a good homework exercise would probably be to just sit down right now. You could hit pause as long as you come back and just make a lit, like own it. Like I'm reading this great book that um, someone on our team recommended, and I hope to be able to have her on the show, Sari Salato. She calls it like sit down and have a reckoning with yourself where you're just you're like, all right, I'm going to cut the shit. Honestly, these are, these are really my beliefs that are, that are limiting me. So limiting beliefs are definitely a thing that will sabotage you. So Let's talk about some mindset stuff, right? So yes. what do we have there where ladies are sabotaging themselves? You, you know, the most common place I see is right off the bat <clears throat> is making snap judgments about men, about their photos. Um, they don't have enough photos. They have too many photos. What's in their photos or uh, typos in their profile or content of their profile. It's, it's like they're being... Well, picky really is, is what it is. But what what I think what they're thinking is, is they're being discerning. But really, it's too picky because it's coming from this. 
If you have a limiting belief, there's no good men where I live, you're going to collect evidence that you're right. Because as humans, that's what we like to do. So that's going to lead to snap judgments. Well, yeah. And then what I um, used to see, uh, and I did it before I you know, started doing this work when I was like online dating, is I would almost like screenshot those guys. And, I, and then I would be like, uh, consensus build with people, right? Can you believe this guy? Like, right? So then we'd we'd get collective judgmental, picky energy. Um, and if there's that one friend that says, oh, well, like, I don't know, maybe like, it's nice. Like maybe he blah, blah, blah. They're like, nah, you don't know. Exactly. Right? Like you don't know what I'm going through. So being, um, being picky about those things is really, really important. And so what do you say to the ladies who are like, yeah, but I'm not going to settle Sherry and Marnie. What, what do you say to them? Well, um, if you are looking through the lens of, of being open-hearted and values-based and extending men goodwill and credit, there is no such thing as settling. Say more. That's so deep. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, it's about finding your right match from a place and I'm, this is going to sound so cheesy, but it's really a place of positivity, not judgment. And when you're coming from that place, there is no settling because you're finding your best match and it works for you and it fills you up and it's amazing. I love that. So let's see what you say about this thing, because I think this is another way that people sabotage. By the way, I was using this analogy the other day. I'm going to stick with it. Um, you know, those like sand art where there's like layers of sand, you put the red in and you put the beige in, then you put the blue. Have you ever seen those? I, totally, totally. Okay. Have. So I want ladies to think about this. It's like, if you are looking at the layers of what is possibly in your way, right? That you're, it's the actual cause of why you can't meet anyone online uh, or offline. I want you to think about these as layers. So Sherry talked about the little who's that we talked about, like the limiting beliefs, right? And then those little who's and limiting beliefs create this men's mindset, right? This is mm -hmm. the lens. And so then what that looks like in real life is you're making snap judgments, you're finding typos, you're being hypercritical. One of my favorite ones is someone said, um, uh, I need a guy, this guy doesn't read uh, because he doesn't read books, but he reads like uh, magazines, online journals, he reads things for work, whatever. And so mm -hmm. she was like, you know, I would never, ever date a guy who doesn't read, right? And she looked in the profile to try and find all these reasons why um, he was not her person. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to know that if you have that layer of sand, this mindset layer is like probably like two inches. Like it's a thick one. <laughs> so <laughs> then what happens is you look at your sand art and you're like, fuck sand art, like I'm out, right? And so we hear about ladies um, getting discouraged, getting overwhelmed, um, deleting the app, putting their profile on a uh, pause, um, convincing themselves they're like meant to be single and they're just meant to be an mm -hmm. aunt or they're meant to be like a superstar at work. Um, and then they just peace out. And this is a really, uh, really important, let's say a uh, clue uh, to how you're sabotaging yourself. Talk to me about that one, Sherry. Um, because you're rationalizing, right? You're, you're, you're in rationalizing this way. It's like, you know what? I have a nice life. I don't, I don't need a guy. Um, you are stuffing down your, um, hopes and dreams. What we're, we're built for connection. And if you're interested in online dating, if you're out there dating, you want a connection and, it's so when you are rationalizing that way and shutting down and not dealing with these layers of sand or your own disappointment, um, you're just cutting off from such an essential part of yourself. And I think that's so important to hear. And, and I loved listening to this. I'm listening to this book, uh, The Beautiful No, uh, as I mentioned. And she talks about how um, and she did this with her weight. And I think people do this with their weight. And I think they do this with love is they, they literally just stop thinking about it. You shut yourself so far down, mm -hmm. yep. right? That you literally don't even think about it. Um, and in that space, what are you doing, Sherry? Like when you think about that strategy of like, if I convince myself and then I just focus on 
all the other things that are filling up my life. And and maybe they're and, and and for a lot of you they're like really amazing things like for Sherry Slot I mean she freaking was producing the Oprah Show I mean that doesn't suck right um, so you all have your version of that but what happens when you just stop thinking about it when your your pause goes on too long well when um when your pause goes on too long um, it affects every aspect of your life because we can't when you when you're shutting one part of yourself off it can't help but have tendrils into other parts of your life. And your and, brain does that, right? Like it's not, you're not, this is like you're, the way your brain actually works, right? Correct. It's the way your brain works. And then what, what happens with ladies is um, they can't keep it stuffed down anymore, right? Like trying to hold a, um, a beach ball underwater when you just can't do it anymore and it pops up and it's it's a big crisis and some ladies get all determined. It's like, you know, I'm going to do it right this time. And, um, but if you haven't dealt with the limiting beliefs, you default back to those same lenses. And, and that's the yo-yo that happens. I think this is such an important piece because by not dealing with the, the, the reckoning, right, we call it getting cracked open on our campus. If you don't really mm -hmm. look at the source of those things, the, the frame around which your sand art is made, <laughs> <laughs> right? Then no matter what sand you put in there, it's still going to, you know, be this picture of dissatisfaction and um, a lack of fulfillment and not being able to really have that connection that you really, really, really truly want. So it's really important that you don't sabotage yourself with rationalizing, with numbing out, with shutting yourself down, that your nervous system just can't deal with so many things. It just shuts down. And then there's like, you know, the pandemic, I think, did that for a lot of people. They were like, shit, right? Like, I don't, I'm really alone. Um, and so, and there was nothing else to really focus on. So people did those little reckonings and they decided they didn't want to continue to sabotage. Now, the thing that's happening is if you didn't meet your honey in the last year and things are starting to open up, uh, what's going to happen? You're going to sabotage it. How? Right. And, and. I want to say one thing about this deciding that I'm doing air quotes to take a break or what sometimes what I hear ladies say is I just need to recover. Um, be honest with yourself, ladies. Uh, recovery does not take two years. Yes. Yes. I used to say this all the time. And when um, I would be with my new moms, uh, when I was a new mom and we would joke about it where the ladies would be like, oh my God, I, I'm still saying, you know, I, I've gained all this weight because I just had a baby and it was like three years ago. Right. Right. It's that same thing. You're like, okay, you don't need a break for two years. Okay. Now let's talk about, okay. So we're in our little sand art. Uh, you've decided to like, go get some more sand. Um, and now every time you go online, and we're just going to talk about online for this show, um, you are sabotaging like all over the place. It's like the little whack-a-mole toy, right? It's like, nope, nope. Um, so let's talk about some of the mistakes that ladies make when they're dating online that is actually sabotage. Uh, and again, this comes in the, um, I call it being too precious. It's up there with being um, picky and it's having really rigid rules and a really common one I hear ladies doing is, well, you know, I messaged him yesterday and he didn't message me back. So I'm going to unmatch with him. And I'm like, what? what? Yeah. Where, where's the extending goodwill and credit that life happens? Well, yeah. And who made up, like, I don't really know, but I never saw the rule in a rule book that said when you're online dating, there's like, he must respond within X amount of minutes, hours, days. Right. And so now we're coming to another thing that ladies do is they have rules and they make up stories. Well, he must not really be, uh, be available to date because he didn't message me back within 24 hours. They'll go back and they'll look at his profile. And then they're like, look, now they're, they're detective. They like got promoted to like top detective. And they're like, these are all the reasons why he's probably busy. <laughs> right. Okay. So you don't need to unmatch men if they don't answer back right away. Uh, what's another way that you see people sabotaging? Um, I think a, a, another one that's really common with, with ladies is this idea of creating, they, they think they're trying to create connection with giving out too much information. And it's got a really fun name. It's called promiscuous self-disclosure. 
because we all know that physically you can go too fast, right? Right. Um, but you can go too fast with self-disclosure. And so the mistake I, I see when ladies are doing that, they're saying, you know, but I'm just creating connection or I want him to know me. And um, that is a sneaky sabotage. And so what are some of the things just so people can be like, oh, shit, did I do that? Um, sharing, uh, let's say if it's a first date and sharing some traumatic personal uh, event that happened in your childhood probably would be considered promiscuous self-disclosure. Um, a common mistake we see ladies making is talking about their life and they, and they keep painting a picture that they're too, that I'm really busy. I'm busy yes. Doing oh my God. Yeah. The busy and there's, there's cover words for busy, slammed, buried, uh, um, like hectic. Love it. Yeah. And so just, you know, and so don't answer your message. When someone asks you out, let's say you ha have a pre-existing um, uh, uh, plan. Ladies, this is just a free tip for me to you. <laughs> don't don't start it with, um, I'm really busy. So the only time that I, or my work is slammed right now. So the only time I have is, or like this week is super hectic. Hectic. No, don't do it. Um, my other favorite uh, per, uh, promiscuous self-disclosure and I've shared this before, but I just think it's so good. It's the uh, mm. medical overshare. Ah. The medical overshare. So I, um, at the very beginning of my business, I coached men, which was super fun. And um, this guy, he was so excited about this date. And this woman was beautiful and smart and oh, it was amazing. And um, they went to this lovely dinner and he got this like gourmet, like macaroni and cheese, but it was like one of those like four cheeses with, mm -hmm. you know, that thing, right? Yep. And he was like, oh my God, this is so amazing. Now this was pre COVID. So he said <laughs> like a decade ago, um, oh my God, this is amazing. Do you want to bite? It's so good. She was like, oh, well I have this, uh, heart condition that is, um, what do you call that when you're born with it? Um, a congenital. congenital heart thing. And so I can't eat cheese or dairy or any of the, and da, 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 da. Now this guy was in his forties and he wants to have kids so badly. Uh, and so all he, all he thought for the whole rest of the night was like, if I fall in love with this woman and I have kids with her, are our kids going to have a heart disease? Right. right. He awesome. never went out with, he didn't go out with her because she medically overshared. Now, it's not that you shouldn't share that at some point. You just don't do it on the first date when someone says, would you like a bite of my, my, my dairy item? I, I love that you're saying that because we're not saying have secrets. Right. We're, we're saying there's a line about being private and appropriate as you're getting to know someone. Exactly. And we also had a client, Avital, who I love, um, who was dating a guy and um, they were going out for a lot of dates and she felt like he was a little bit guarded. And so she just had a vulnerable conversation with him. And he was like, honestly, I, I didn't know the right time to tell you this, but um, this sucks. But both my parents <clears throat> have um, debilitating diseases. Like it's one has this and one has that. And I, and I'm kind of, I'm, you know, almost 40 years old and I decided to move back because I'm, I'm, there for them, like they're caregivers, but I decided to, to, to live in the same home with them again. And I was like, you know, I was afraid of how you might, uh, perceive me. Um, and by that time they had gone on so many dates. She was like, Oh yeah. my God, that's amazing. Like, I love that about you. Right. And so it wasn't that he disclosed it in that he was hiding it. It was that, you know, there was an appropriate time to share that. And he did. And so it's really important that you are discerning. Um, and why do you think people do promiscuous self-disclosure? Um, I think it's because little who's want certainty. They want, they want connection when they want it as, a, as opposed to letting it evolve. Um, and there, there's this faulty thinking that if I share this really personal information, I will connect with this person and mm. he will connect with me. Renee Brown calls it um, spotlighting, right? Where you like, instead mm -hmm. of giving, like you just shine this giant light, like, do you like me now? Or, you know, are you really going to love me now that you hear all this shit about me? Um, and it's almost like you are um, that little who like is, is driving the bus saying like, you know, once he finds out <laughs> about me, <laughs> you know, then we'll be, I'll be back in control uh, and we'll be safe. 
And And most little who's want to be taken care of. So the faulty thinking is, is kind of like, um, you don't, you ladies don't think this, but what's coming across is I'm wounded. Take care of me. Mm, And that is not what you want to do. And, and I also see, um, the other, uh, uh, little too much too soon. I've seen women be like, um, you know, someone will say like, oh, you're, you're so gentle or you're so this, or you're so funny. Like, ah, well, you know, I gotta, yeah. Once you see my sarcastic side though, you won't think it's so cute. (laughs) Yeah. That's sabotage ladies. Um, right. And so we want to make sure that we are, um, not unconsciously, uh, doing that promiscuous self-disclosure. Let's talk about this one. Uh, the rabbit hole of chit chat. (laughs) Oh, one of the, one of the common ones. Um, and I think that comes out of fear, right? We're we're online dating because we want to go on a date and a really, uh, common sabotage is this rabbit hole of, um, endless texting back and forth and because it feels safer, right? And, and the danger of that is it creates this false sense of connection that, um, either, it's not, it, it, depending on how long you do it, the danger part of this is that connection's not there when you guys meet face to face. Because all of the, all of the physical cues and the getting to know you in the real world aren't there. It's, an, it's out of balance. Yeah, I, I told this story before, but I did that once with this guy and ended up flying to New York to meet him. And let's just say there was no kind of connection and no chemistry. And it was like, what? and I'd spent like months talking to him. Wow. Building up this idea of who he was. And oh my God, that was, that's a whole other story, Um, (laughs) which we will tell on another episode. Um, (laughs) But don't do that. Um, The other thing that I see, and you and I have laughed about this when we get to go in people's inbox and and coach them, um, is that they get asked out in the inbox uh, yes. and then w- women don't answer because they're busy or they just, they just literally don't answer the, would you like to go out question? What have you seen in that, uh, sabotage? Um, absolutely. They, they just kind of get this like deer in the headlights because they don't know how to communicate because they might legitimately have something like be going out of town. Right. And they just legitimately don't know how to communicate an interest and seal the deal for a later time. And that's the most important, the most important piece, ladies, is like, you have an opportunity to seal the deal for a later time. So when he says, would you like to go out Thursday and you go, that sounds great, but I'm so busy and I'm going to go visit my friend and I got tickets to go see Van Gogh and it's on that night. And by the way, how did work go yesterday? Exactly. That's exactly what it looks like. (laughs) And then they'll have a conversation about work and Van Gogh. And then they'll come to us and they'll be like, and that guy never asked me out. And I'm like, let's go in the inbox. Right. And then, and then we've gone on the inbox and he's asked and he's, and he circled back and asked again. Yes. So ladies sit your asses down. If you have done this, go in our Facebook group and just raise your hand and be like, OMG, I've totally done this. Um, Okay. Another way of sabotaging, and this one really breaks my heart. Um, And I think a lot of women have a story, a limiting belief, like I can't date more than one guy at a time. And we're not saying sleep with more than one guy at a time. We're not saying like, you know, be an exclusive ish, like relationships with more than one man. We're talking about actually dating. And what happens is women are like, they pick one guy who is interested or likes them. And then they just completely overfocus on that person. What does that look like? Um, that looks like ruminating and obsessing about, um, has he messaged me? What did he message me? What does it mean? And um, you know what? It takes up a ton of brain space. And then what it does is it elicits all these different behaviors that we call pick me, pick me behaviors. Uh, maybe pretzeling to be what you think he wants is, is a really common pick me behavior. Or not making plans with anyone, like not confirming plans because maybe he's going to ask you out for like Friday or Saturday. So when your girlfriend's like, hey, do you want to go to the farmer's market, you know, on Sunday morning? And you're like, I don't know. What if we have a date on Saturday and it goes really well? And then I sleep over and then I want to like hang out with him on Sunday. And so you tell your friend, I don't know. Um, I can't make a plan yet. Don't do that. 
I don't do that. <laughs> and you, you guys are missing out on such an empowered um, way of being, which is being in choice. And you that's know? that's huge. I just want to underscore that you said that because I think one of the biggest limiting beliefs is, is that I don't get to choose. I just need to like, if I can just find one that's like decent and that's not true. Like you're, when you're empowered, when you're dating courageously, when you are really doing it from your authentic self um, and you have freedom from all of those little who's and limiting beliefs, um, your behaviors don't translate into all these mistakes that we're talking about, right? And so guys who meet you are going to be like, holy crap, she is different from any other woman I've dated because remember, everyone else is making these mistakes. And he wants to be with you. And so you get to choose. What, do you have a favorite story? I'm just curious about someone choosing or someone being really grateful that they didn't do the pick me uh, tactic where they focus on one guy at a time? Well, I think what, what we hear to your point about when there, people are really doing the work, we're consistently hearing from our ladies is, um, I never thought I'd be attracted to someone like him. Mm. And it opened up their radar to high quality guys they couldn't even imagine or dream about. Yet they were attracting them because they did this work, Marnie, that you just described doing. And that's a game changer. Mm -hmm. um, and what I hope you all are hearing is, Again, we go back to the sand art, you know, depending upon how many layers of little who's and limiting beliefs you have and that mindset, um, and then you're doing these online sabotage moves, no wonder your brain gets overstimulated and fried because you don't get results. Mm -hmm. And then there's no room, like you filled out the frame and it is a sand art picture of shit, of shitty dating, right? Um, and so these behaviors stack on each other and they create this world that you live in where there is no possibility and there is no choice. And what I hope that you see is that every single layer that we've talked about here has an alternative. So when you start to shift things, the whole entire thing looks and feels different and it's actually easy and fun. Yes. And I want to say too, that sometimes when people think about doing little who work, it can feel overwhelming. Um, and it doesn't have to be overwhelming. The The way we do it, while it can be uncomfortable, it's quick. You make permanent change. And um, it doesn't, it doesn't, it takes a fraction of a time to heal it than it did to create it. Oh, uh, I love that. That is so, so true. Just because it took a lifetime to create doesn't mean you need to spend a lifetime trying to fix it. Absolutely. I love it. Okay, let's talk about uh, one of my last favorite behavior mistakes, right? Sabotaging mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, because this one happens so often. Um, he misses a schedule call <laughs> and you automate. He's like, he's out, D-bag, block, delete, fuck them, fuck men, talk to my friends about it, and then, you know, yeah. just be done. Uh, yes. And, um, Oh, gosh, where do I start with this one? <laughs> the hardest one about this, again, is wrapped in reality. And if you just, okay, so I do I do online dating following what we're, we teach our ladies. And um, this guy missed a scheduled phone call. And I was okay with that because I extend men goodwill and credit. Life happens. And I happen to be saying to my sister, you know, oh, so-and-so missed a call. And she's like, oh, he's out. That's not good. And then I had to take the time and energy to educate her about extending goodwill and credit. And I do have a line, but it's it, it's roughly the rule of threes. You know, I will extend goodwill and credit and uh, invite someone to a call three times. And then if that, if that doesn't work out, then that means something to me. But it's just one of those things where it can seem like a really easy rule. You casually say it to friends and, and you're that negative consensus building again. Well, exactly. And I think, and it's also when you say extend goodwill and credit, they have earned it so far, right? So if a guy's like, sends you a dick pic, and then he says, right. um, you know, uh, what do you think about three ways? And then you decide to have a call with them and he blows it off. I mean, you know, that guy probably hadn't earned goodwill and credit, right? Um, right. But if he's like, you know, a perfectly um, a polite, respectful, you know, human, 
And we've all been in those moments where the meeting runs later or, you know, they're in the car and they don't want to do the FaceTime date, you know, with the, while they're driving or whatever it is. Um, look at like, what is the person earned? Um, and remember that if you're always looking for ways to rule someone out, you will find him, find that. So we like to tell our ladies, rule them in until they rule themselves out. And I love the rule of three um, because, yeah, if they miss three calls, then they're out. Uh, how did you come to three? Oh, that's a good question. Um, three just feels compassionate and expansive. Um, and so I don't really have a good answer for that. I, I think what's really great about it is that there's that everyone is going to have their own feel intuitive. And by the way, different guys are going to earn different amounts of credit. True. Right. And so, you know, it, it really, really does depend on things. But what I think is most important, ladies, is that when a guy does one thing, be open. He still might not be your guy and that's okay. You're practicing having an open heart and open mind. Um, and the most important thing is then if you, again, if you've done this sort of baseline work, if you have the right frame, um, then you won't be taking it personally. And there's other guys in the funnel. And so it is what, you know, it is um, just information rather than a reflection of who you are or it doesn't mean, you always like to say, don't go global. Explain what that means. Um, gosh, going global is when you're creating the, the mother of all stories um, based on very little information. And, and burning down the village based on very little information about a human. Right, exactly. And so it's like, oh, you know, this guy sucks. All guys suck. Dating sucks. The world sucks. You know, all white men suck. Like, right? Like, you just right. are like, you make it, you extrapolate it out into the everything that is wrong with the world. And by that time, you've gone so far away from looking at yourself um, that, again, you're just right back into that place of, of sabotage. Um, this has been so helpful and amazing. And mm -hmm. so I really appreciate you for sharing all your experience. Oh, thank you. So, so amazing. And Sherry said she was so awesome. And she was like, I'd use this process. And she met a guy and like, what, you just shared this like six weeks or something, right? Um, yes, I met a guy in six weeks and we had a seven month relationship and, um, I collected enough data that he uh, wasn't for me long-term. Um, and blessed and released him. And it was pretty amicable and amazing. And I'm back to practicing again in online dating. And this is what's been amazing. I must have learned some really great lessons in that um, relationship because I'm finding that the the matches that I'm getting on match are um, even higher quality than the first time I was doing it. Woohoo! Right? Because <laughs> yeah. the, the more you grow, you know, the more you open up. And that's an amazing thing. And so, Ladies, don't damn sabotage yourself. It breaks our little hearts. It really does. Um, so on that note, whatever you do, you know it. Do it with some damn dignity. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for tuning into today's show. So if being in an intimate relationship in which you feel 100% seen, heard, and accepted by a high caliber man is a priority for you right now, and you're interested in seeing if you're a fit for working with me and my team at Dating with Dignity, here's what I want you to do. Just head over to DWDVIP, that's D as in dating, W, D as in dating, VIP.com, and book a call to speak with my team. We'll get on the phone with you for about 60 minutes, and you'll get crystal clear on what's stopping you from finding true love right now. We'll also take a look at what you want to create what you want your whole life to look like when you're able to finally be fully expressed as a woman in a healthy relationship with an incredible guy. And if we can help you get from where you are right now to where you want to be, we will show you the fastest path possible that makes sense for you to do that. We help smart, successful women all over the world solve this one missing piece in their life so they can finally have it all. So to see if we can help you do the same thing, head over to DWDVIP.com. I'm Marnie Batista, and let's talk soon.